welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a product which has been around for a while, but finally, I have my hands on one. Now this is the Porter Pack H1 for the Hack RF. I ordered this from Banggood.com along with the aluminium case for a fairly reasonable price. In fact, it was less than half the price because this is most likely a clone of the original Porter Pack. But that doesn't really matter because this functions exactly the same. So the Porter Pack is a companion board for the Hack RF and it allows you to use the Hack RF receive and transmit features without needing a computer. Everything is controlled using the Porter Pack. Now I already owned the Hack RF as Newelex sent me one a few months ago, but you still will need to buy your own as the Porter Pack board doesn't normally come with a Hack RF. There are some deals out there, however, where you can buy it as a complete kit. But for me, I just needed the Porter Pack and the case. Now the Porter Pack itself includes a 2.4 inch color touch screen. It has an older iPod style jog wheel for menu navigation, has an SD card slot, headphone jack, which is also a microphone input, internal battery for real time clock. And this version also has a 2.5 parts per million temperature compensated clock reference or TCXO. Now the Porter Pack is really easy to connect to the Hack RF as the Porter Pack has three separate connectors, which just push into the connectors on the Hack RF expansion sockets. The connectors should already be there, so there's no soldering required. Just carefully push them together. Now, as I was going through assembling the case, I soon realized that there was no space as provided in the kit. I had already assembled the port pack into the case, but the touch screen moved and it didn't feel like a very good fit. Luckily, I had some spaces lying around. Now these spaces are made of plastic, but it was just enough that when fully assembled, it gave a better fit and felt more sturdy. I guess there are lots of different types of Porter Pack Hack RF cases out there, so yours may be different to mine. I've even seen some 3D printed cases online, which I may have a go at printing at some point, but I like the fact that this case is metal and it feels like it will protect the Porter Pack and the Hack RF more than a plastic case would. As I won't be using the clock in and clock out ports, I put some covers over the SMA connectors just to protect them from getting damaged or dusty. Now to power the Porter Pack Hack RF combination, I plugged the USB cable into the USB port and on the other end was plugged into my USB hub. Now if you want to take this portable then I've seen some various methods including installing a battery inside the case or you could just use one of those portable USB chargers or power banks. Now with the power applied we can see that the Hack RF status LEDs are illuminating but there's no life coming from the portal pack. Now the reason for this is that we need to perform a really quick and easy process to flash the Hack RF to support the portal pack. So let's take a look at how we do this. So first off, we're going to download the firmware installer by visiting the ShareBrain GitHub page. I'll leave a link down in the description to this. Now, as I'm using Windows 10, I'm going to download the Windows binary to install the firmware updater. Other operating systems are supported, such as Linux or Mac OS. Just follow the instructions on the GitHub page. Now, once the firmware installer has been downloaded and installed, it's time to run it. You will then be presented with a screen like this prompting you to go ahead and plug in your Porter Pack into your computer's USB port. Once connected, simply press any key on your keyboard to start the flashing process. Now this screen grab that's playing now is playing in real time, so you can clearly see how quick it is to flash the Porter Pack. Now following the prompts on the display, we're now ready to unplug the USB cable and then plug it back in again. At this point, the Porter Pack should boot into the Porter Pack mode and the touchscreen should now be displaying a navigation menu. You can now go ahead and close the firmware flashing tool as it's no longer required. So let's go through the standard port pack firmware to see what features we get. Now as expected, and after all this is an SDR receiver, we have a receiver feature where we can select between AM, FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, and just using the jog wheel, we can change the frequency. Now some of the screen is touch sensitive and I found using a stylus worked better, but it's far quicker just to use the jog wheel and when you get yours, you will know what I mean. So let's have a little scan to see what we can pick up. The antenna connected to the Hack RF is my outside dual band collinear for VHF and UHF, which is mounted on my chin me. So it's actually quite high. And any audio that you hear is from a pair of headphones just sat on my desk, which are connected to the headphone jack on the Porter Pack. Let us know about what is coming. Even if you just cover yourself in a rally, you still get the swirl. 
Now also under the receiver section, we have transponders and there are already three set up and configured. Now the first is AIS, that's boats that you can track and you can also see some nice information about them. But unfortunately, I don't live near any oceans or rivers where there's lots of boat action. Now the second transponder is ERT, which is a feature to decode things like power meters, weather stations, etc. But these are on 900 megahertz and I do not have any of those near me either. So the last transponder here in the list is TPMS, which is for decoding tire pressure sensors from cars. Now the little sensors on cars which transmit the pressure data back to the car's computer. Unfortunately, again, I wasn't able to receive any of these in my location. The next feature down the list is capture, which I believe is a way to record the spectrum that you're currently listening to. If you have an SD card, this would save to the SD card for playback through another device, such as your computer. The next feature on the list is analyze, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be implemented. The next option is setup, and here we can set the date and time, which will remain stored on the port pack, assuming that you have the real time clock battery installed. We're also able to adjust the frequency correction and we're also able to enable the bias T voltage. Now this is particularly useful if you have a device such as an LNA connected, which requires power from the Hack RF antenna port for it to work. No other options in this menu are just information about the device and some configuration for the touch panel. Now as you can see, these features are pretty basic and none of them allow you to transmit. But wait, luckily for us, there are two popular third party firmware packages out there, which will bring the portal pack and hack RF combination to life, essentially giving you a complete RF hacking toolkit in your hand. Now these two popular firmwares are called Havoc and Mayhem, quite nicely named. Now to cover these features of these third party firmware features will take us outside the scope of this portal pack introduction video. But my next video on the Porter Pack will cover in detail how to install the Mayhem firmware and will go through the awesome features that it has. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so, and that will make sure that you'll get to see my next Porter Pack video on the Mayhem firmware. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.